in our scripture for today, we see Jesus. He tells the disciples there in the 16th and in the 17th verse, he tells them that they were blessed to have been living witnesses of the things they heard and saw him do. However, as blessed as they were to walk with Jesus, we find that their faith in the Lord, it could not really kick in until after his ascension. After Jesus ascended, you see the 11, they walked as we do. The 11, they weren't able to see Jesus any longer. They weren't able to physically be in his presence any longer as well. All right. And something that I believe all of us know today that is that walking by faith and not by sight, therefore listening to God, it can be rather difficult. Mm -hmm. come on, come on. It can be incredibly difficult and it has been difficult for many of us. Mm -hmm. The foundation of our faith, it is built on Christ. Yeah. It is built on believing in his death. It is built on believing in his resurrection. Yeah. I would also tell you that our faith is built on being able to perceive the Lord. In other words, it is built on being able to listen to the voice of God. And I want you to notice there that I didn't say to hear the voice of God. I said to listen to the voice of God. You see, yeah, yeah. when we are able to listen to God, we can truly move by faith and we can walk appropriately. All right. All right. Because many struggle with listening to God, they are today led astray. Mm -hmm. And they are therefore then easily consumed. And so I would ask all of you today, are you struggling with listening to the Lord, our God? And therefore, I would ask you that if you are struggling with listening to God, are you struggling in believing in God today? Again, there in our key verse, we will see that Jesus, we will see that the Lord we see that he very much desires for all of us to listen to his voice. After having shared a parable there, in the first through the verse, we will see that Jesus has said, he who has ears to hear, mm -hmm. let him hear. Now, this is a phrase, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. That is a phrase that is actually repeated a few times by Jesus after a couple of, of his other teachings that we find in scripture. Yeah, yeah. To the seven churches that are mentioned in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. it is repeatedly stated, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. The Lord, I would say to all of you today, still says to us through the spirit, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Yeah, yeah. So someone may wonder, well, what does that actually mean? Let's think about this for a moment. For us to truly understand what this means, I feel that I first need to point out that there is a drastic difference between mm -hmm. hearing and listening, even though we see the word here mentioned there in those verses. All right. You see, when one hears, they are doing so passively. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that we are able to hear all kinds of noises. Come on, come on. We hear noises right now, even though you are listening to me preach. Right. We hear all kinds of noises around us, but we aren't really paying those noises much attention, are we? And the reason why we aren't paying those noises much attention is because those noises that we are able to hear all around us, they are of no importance. All right, come on. Do you get where I'm about to go with this yeah, today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, on the other hand, there is listening, which I would say to all of you today is a true skill. It is a true skill for one to listen. All right. 
Somebody's going to be thinking about, oh, it's a skill to listen. Well, think about that for a moment. To listen means that one is being attentive to what it is that they may be listening to in that moment. They are being attentive in order to learn. They are being attentive in order to understand. In other words, they are listening intently to comprehend. See, not everybody listens to comprehend. They just be hearing. You see, after gaining full understanding, the one who listens, they learn. And then they move accordingly to what they listened to. In the parable of the sower, again, which we see there from the first through the eighth verse there in the 13th chapter of Matthew's gospel, Jesus, he actually explained this difference, the drastic difference between one who listens and one who merely hears. Jesus taught that there was a sower and that sower is God. And the sower that is God went about scattering seed all over his field. The seed that was being sown, Jesus, he later likened to the word of the kingdom of God. We see that down there in 18 through the 23rd verse. Jesus, he likened those that are attentive to those that listen to the word of God to be good ground for growth. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, Jesus, he likened those who were just hearing passively there. Mm-hmm. He likened them to be a poor ground for growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, know, you probably heard the saying in one ear and out the other ear. Mm-hmm. All right. That describes the one who merely just hears. So I would say to all of you today that the Lord, he desires for us to listen. Mm -hmm. God, he desires for us to be attentive so that we can receive his word. Much rather than us just passively hearing his word. God doesn't want his word to go in one ear and out the other ear. When we listen, we can learn. And when we learn, we can believe. And when we believe, we can continue listening and we can grow and we can mature in our faith. So if I were to paraphrase my key verse for today so that we can have a fuller understanding as what Jesus meant by what is said in our key verse, Jesus, I would say to you, said, he who has ears to hear, let him listen. Let him be attentive to the spirit so that he can understand, so that he can comprehend the word of God. Do you see what I mean there? Yet still, with that being said, there are many of us who struggle with listening to God. And I don't say that to talk down to anybody. It is truly a struggle Mm -hmm. for many of us to be able to perceive what God has said to us. And so the question will come up, why so? Why do so many of us struggle with listening to, with being able to comprehend what God has said to us? Well, Let us think about that for a moment. Let's think about answering that question. And I believe for in order for us to answer that question, we need to think about listening in general. In general, most of us struggle with listening to things that are simply of no interest to us. You know, I I tell you all right now that I don't listen to many things that are of no interest to me. I don't pay attention to conspiracies. They don't do anything for me. I don't care for them. I don't care for lies. Again, they don't do anything for me. Uh, In other words, I don't keep up with a bunch of mess. Things that are a cause for strife and and a cause for contention. I do my best just to not pay any of those things any attention because none of those things do anything to uplift me in my soul. They certainly don't make me laugh. They don't make me happy. 
So if something doesn't make me laugh, if something doesn't make me happy, if it doesn't do anything for my soul, I pay it no attention. It is no interest to me, so I don't listen to it. Sadly, I would say to all of you today is that there are many people who turn away from the word of God because the word of God to them, it is of no interest to them. They don't find it to be interesting. That is why some struggle with listening to the word of God today. As you have heard me say before, stubbornness is also a key factor into why so many struggle with listening to the Lord, our God, or listening in general as well. You see, there are many who feel like they know everything. And again, because their mind is already made up, they again choose not to listen. They find listening to what others have to say. They find it to be meaningless. They find it to be pointless. And so again, on that note, there are many who are too stubborn to listen to the word of God because their minds are already made up in that they don't need to listen to what the Lord has to say to them. Imagine being that way, not listening to the creator of all things, including you. On the other hand, there are some who struggle with listening to things that can be too difficult to understand. And I tell you all that that is a true reality. When things are too hard for us to understand, guess what we do? We begin to tune out. We begin to stop paying much attention. Some of us, we even grow bored and we'll pick up our phones and we'll try to find something else to do that may be of more interest to us. So on that note, there are many who struggle with listening to God because again, his word to them can be quite difficult for them to understand. Mm -hmm. And so we would say that those are the ones who are in true need of help when it comes to listening to the Lord, because again, listening to God for them, mm -hmm. it is a real struggle. Right. Right. Again, I ask you today, are you struggling with listening to the Lord? In his letter to the Corinthians, mm -hmm. Paul, he said there in the second chapter of first Corinthians that he did not go to them with excellence of speech or with worldly wisdom to declare to them the testimony of God. That is the gospel of God. Paul, he shared with them the gospel, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but he says there in the 13th verse that he went to them with wisdom that the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. There's a reason there why I referenced that 13th verse. And the reason is this. For those who find it difficult to understand the Lord today and to understand his word, I want to make it clear to you that when God speaks to you, he speaks spiritually. Do you understand what I mean by that? When God speaks to you, he speaks to you of the spirit. I say to you today that that is extremely important for everybody to know mm -hmm. those who are already walking by faith, those who may not be walking by faith, but desire to walk by faith and those who are struggling to listen to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I say to you today, don't try to listen to God by and with a worldly mindset. Oh, oh. Now to reiterate that point mm -hmm. to the Corinthians, we'll see that Paul, he wrote there in the 14th verse of the second 
chapter of first Corinthians, he wrote, and I want you to pay very close attention to this 14th verse. Mm -hmm. He said, the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they, what the Lord has to say, are spiritually discerned. Now, somebody may not understand what is being said there in that verse. Let me tell you what this means. What Paul means there in that 14th verse is that in order for you to be able to listen to God and therefore be able to understand what God is saying to you, you must be of the same spirit mm -hmm. as him. Mm -hmm. You must be of the same spirit of God in order for you to listen to him, in order for you to understand what he is saying to you. If you are not of the same spirit of God, then guess what? Right. His word will never make any sense to you. It will be nothing but foolishness and you will struggle with listening to the Lord. We'll see Paul. He speaks further to this point to those who may be struggling with listening to God today. Paul, he said to the Corinthians in the third chapter and in the second verse, he said to them that when he first taught them the gospel, that he fed them like they were babies. He said that he fed them with milk and not with solid food. There's a reason why we don't start our babies off. There's a reason why you yourself didn't start off eating solid food. You didn't have the teeth to eat it. So Paul, he did this to the Corinthians when it came to speaking and teaching them the word of God. Mm -hmm. He did this because he could not speak to them, as Paul said there in the first verse of the third chapter. He couldn't speak to them as if they were spiritual people right. because they weren't spiritual people. Mm -hmm. Paul said that they were carnal minded. Yeah. They were babies in Christ and he need to speak to them spiritually as if they were babies. Mm -hmm. Had Paul spoken to them as people who had been walking by the faith for a very long time, it would have been even more difficult for them to listen to and to understand the word of God. Even at the point in time where Paul was writing this letter to them, Paul said there in the third verse of the third chapter of first Corinthians, he said that the, the Corinthians were still carnal and that they were still behaving like mere men. So even though Paul had preached the gospel to the Corinthians in its most simplest forms, essentially giving them the ABCs of the faith, many of them still struggled with understanding. They still struggled with being able to listen to God. So the question may arise, well, even though Paul was preaching and teaching to them the gospel in its simplest form, why could they not understand the Lord? Why could they not understand the word? Paul, again, he has said to them because they were carnal minded. Paul said that it was because their carnal, their worldly mind, he said it was blocking them from listening to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I'm about to get at now? Mm -hmm. The carnal mind, we should understand, it makes it difficult to understand that which is of the spirit. Because again, the carnal mind, it is contrary to the spirit of God. I want you, all of you who are strong of the faith, those who may be of little faith and those who are of no faith, but desire to believe in the Lord and to hear him who desire to most importantly, listen to him today. The reason that you may have moments where you're struggling to listen to the Lord today is because your mind may not be of the spirit. You may be thinking worldly rather than spiritually. And when you are doing that, it will be tough. 
it will be difficult. It will be impossible for you to be able to listen to God. It will be impossible for you to understand the Lord. Do you hear me here today? You see, sadly, many refuse to move on from their carnal minds, mm -hmm. which I would say to you today, it is a danger. Yeah. It is a danger for us who are already walking by faith because God never stops speaking to us. He always wants you to listen to him and you have to listen to him to be obedient in the faith, to walk in his righteousness. Mm -hmm. But it is extremely difficult for those who, again, may not be of faith, but desire to be of faith and desire to listen to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of how Jesus described the generation that is of this age while he walked in this world. Jesus, listen to this, likened this generation to being like children running back and forth in a marketplace playing games, trying to entertain themselves. You know, when you went to the stores, when you was little with your parents, you know, that was really boring. At least it was for me and my brother. You know, we would, you know, when we got of age, we would tell mom and dad, hey, can we go over to the game section? Can we, can we go and check out the, the gaming books so that we can not be bored? And they would let us do that. But before then, you know, we would just be walking around with them and it was boring. Yeah, yeah, watch it, watch it. And, and Jesus, he likened us to being like that. He said that we are in the marketplace and, you know, some of us, we play games trying to entertain ourselves. Yeah, they, you know, yeah. we, we go from one thing to the next thing. You know, we have fun for a little bit. We're entertained for a little bit, but guess what? We get bored of that one thing and we move on to the next thing. Yeah, Come on. But eventually again, we grow tired of that next thing as well. The fun, it, it fades away. Yes, yes. And, and many are like that when it comes to the doctrines of this world. Always in search for something. Mm -hmm. Always in search for some truth. So many jump from conspiracy to conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Many jump from worldly doctrine to the next doctrine, thinking that it's doing something good for them in their soul, when in actuality, it is doing nothing for their soul at all. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he explained that you know, some people approached him and John the Baptist with that kind of mindset as well. Yeah. John, for a little bit of time, Jesus said that they enjoyed him. They went out to see him, but they, they grew tired of him. Mm -hmm. You know, John the Baptist was not a glutton. He wasn't a drunk. But the people, when they grew tired of John the Baptist, they said, hey, this man, he, he must be demon possessed and, and something must be done about him. Right. This is what Jesus said. The people, Jesus said in the 11th chapter of Matthew's gospel, if you want to see it for yourself, he said there in the 19th verse, he said that they did him the same exact way. Right. And we know this for a little bit of time. There were people that followed Jesus because of the miracles. They were amazed by Jesus and the things that he had did. Mm -hmm. But then they turned on him. Right. When Jesus said, hey, believe in me, I'm the son of God. Drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. They turned on Jesus. And they turned on Jesus and they began to complain that Jesus was a glutton. They began to say, hey, Jesus, he's nothing but a drunkard that, that hangs out with and sits down with sinners. They had fun for a little bit of time, but they grew tired. When you cannot let go of the world, when you can't let go of that carnal mind, you will end up shunning the Lord. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. There are many who completely turn away. There are many who shun the Lord today. Mm -hmm. As again, they find that they are of no interest in having faith in him and in therefore listening to what the Lord has to say. They say, hey, I, I, I was I was listening to him for a little bit, but hey, he didn't do anything for me, is what many people say today. Those that shun the word of God, they will always complain. They will always grumble. They will always find a problem 
with the Lord. And therefore they will find a problem with his word as well, where I tell you today, there is no problem with God. There is no problem with his word as well. You see, over the years, many of us who are of the faith, we have tried to dress up the gospel, <laughs> trying to teach and to preach it with persuasive and enticing words of human, of worldly, of carnal wisdom, mm -hmm. rather than in demonstration of the spirit, as Paul said there in the second chapter of first Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Many of us believe that if we engage others with such enticing those we engage will end up somehow having faith and, and walking in faith in the Lord. But I tell you today that those who have their minds made up, they won't do it. Stop dressing up the gospel today. Preach the gospel boldly. Speak the truth boldly today. Rather harsh words, Jesus said, do not give what is holy to dogs, nor cast your pearls before swines, lest they trample them under their feet. And turn and tear you in pieces is what Jesus has said. Why give those who are uninterested in listening to the Lord and heeding his word? Why give them the time of day? I would ask all of you who are of strong faith and who are testifying of the Lord today. We who testify of God today, we should feed those who who may be struggling with listening to the Lord today because it may be difficult for them. We are in the world for them to feed them, to help them so that they can grow so that they can understand so that they to themselves can be able to listen to God and be able to grow in the faith. So again, I feel so again, I feel that it is time for us to feed those that desire to listen to the Lord, but struggle with hearing his message. In order for you to be able to listen to God, you must again, I say today, you must be of the same spirit as him. Again, if you want to listen to God today, but you are struggling, the first place you begin is by again, turning away from your old ways. I said that last week, didn't I? Putting off that carnal mindset and then gaining that same spirit that is of him. Then when you do that, you will be able to know the Lord. When I say that you will be able to know the Lord, I want you to be able to understand. I want you to know that you will be able to listen to him as well. Now to the Corinthians, Paul, we will see in the second chapter there of first Corinthians and the ninth verse, we'll see that Paul, he quoted scripture from Isaiah when he said to them, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Is what Paul said. Again, God's word, I want you to hear again today, can only be understood with the help of the helper. Again, we must be of the same spirit. And the helper, I tell you today, is the Holy Spirit of God who can dwell with you in your hearts today. Only those that have loved Christ, only those that strive to keep his way, I tell you today, can know and can receive the Holy Spirit. If, if you want to be of the same spirit of God, you must have faith. In order to receive the Holy Spirit, you must believe in the death. You must believe in the resurrection of Christ. That faith, I tell you today, it must be sincere. It must be genuine in order for you to receive the Holy Spirit and be of the same spirit as God. When you receive the Holy Spirit of God, you are again, therefore then of the same spirit as him. Let us remember what Jesus said about the role that the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. 
To the disciples, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Yes, 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 yes. To this day, I say to you that the Holy Spirit is leading all of us who love the Lord. He's leading all of us to know, mm -hmm. to understand the word, God's truth, his gospel. You see, it is by the Holy Spirit that we hear from the Lord. It is by the Holy Spirit that we learn from the Lord today. As I have said in the past, when the Spirit speaks to us, we should not rebuke him. We should not be combative. We should listen to the Holy Spirit. When we listen to the Holy Spirit, guess what? We are listening to God. I don't know if you hear me here today. Now, when Jesus taught the parable of the sower, there in the 13th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 10th verse, we find that his closest disciples, we find that they were struggling to understand the message. So when they did not understand the message, they asked Jesus there in that 10 verse, why do you speak to them? The people in, I would also say the disciples were saying, Hey, why, why are you talking to us as well? Why are you talking to us in parables? See the disciples, I want you to understand again, they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. So they, they desire for Jesus to further explain the parable so that they could understand what, what Jesus was saying to them. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand today that if you are finding God's word difficult to understand, therefore, if you are struggling with listening to God today, I want you to understand that you don't have to be afraid to ask him to further explain. Do you hear what I just said? If you are struggling with listening to God today, don't be afraid to ask God questions. Don't be afraid to say to the Lord, Hey, I need you to explain this further to me. Guess what happens when you say that to God? He's going to take time to further explain to you what he means. God is not the author of confusion. He's the author of clarity and understanding. If you go to God with questions, he has answers for you. Just look at Job. In his response to the disciples, Jesus, he answered there in the 11th and in the 12th verse there, he answered because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to them it has not been given for whoever has to him more will be given. He will have abundance. This I want you to understand was to say that whoever wants to know the word of God can know it. God will reveal it to them in a manner so that they can know it. God will reveal it to you. If you have questions, if you are struggling and you go to the Lord and say, Hey, explain this to me. The Lord will take time to further explain it to you in a manner so that you can understand it. The people would have been able to understand the parables that Jesus was teaching them. As again, you have heard me say before, God, he has not hidden his word from any of us. God, God has not hidden his word from anybody. Let us remember that Jesus, he proclaimed that he is the light of the world. Yeah, yeah. He encouraged that we should all walk while we have the light, lest we are overcome by darkness. Yeah. There's still a whole bunch of light in this world today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to walk in darkness. Mm -hmm. There are many you can go to today. If you're struggling with listening to God, mm -hmm. who can help you out? We, the church today, we who are sincere in our faith, we who genuinely believe today, Jesus said that we are lights in the world. We are supposed to be helpers as well. 
So in his response to the disciples, Jesus, he makes it clear that he desires for us to come to him for clarity. Did you hear that? Jesus, he desires for you to come to him for clarity when you may lack understanding, when you may not be able to listen to him. To add to that point, remember that Jesus, he also said that we should always ask, we should always seek for him. Jesus, he said that we should always knock on his door because his door, it is always open to all of us who are of faith. And I say to you today that if you're struggling with listening to God today, Mm -hmm. open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you continue struggling to understand after that point, I say to you again, don't ever feel like you can't go to the Lord. His light is still in the world today. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask God questions. Mm -hmm. If you want to know, If you want clarity, again, I say to you today, God will give you clarity. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to go without understanding. God doesn't want you to be confused. Mm -hmm. Now, again, he may have to feed us with with baby food. Mm -hmm. I tell you today, there ain't nothing wrong with eating baby food from the Lord. So I share this with you today because I want you to understand that there is great value Mm -hmm. when it comes to listening to God. Mm -hmm. There is great value when it comes to being able to heed his word Mm -hmm. that I believe that all of us should understand today. In a prayer of his, David spoke about how the wicked close up their, David said, fat hearts with their mouths speaking proudly. This is a sentiment that is echoed in the 119th Psalm, if you want to turn over there and see it today, where the psalmist spoke about the proud having hearts as fat as grease living in their pride. He said there in the 70th verse. The psalmist in the 119th Psalm expressed just how much they value being able to listen to God, Mm -hmm. just how much they value the word of God. The psalmist in the 50th verse expressed that the word of God, which we know is true, expressed that it gave them life. Look at what listening to God can do for you. We saw this last week. Listening to God can give you life. And I ain't talking about life physically. I'm talking about life spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord's word gave the psalmist life, the psalmist then proclaimed there in the 57th verse, you are my portion, O Lord. Is God your portion today? Just how much did the word of God mean to the psalmist? We'll see that the psalmist expressed there in the 72nd verse, the law of your mouth the psalmist said is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Look at how highly valued listening to God was for the psalmist. I tell you today that I agree with the psalmist on that note. You see, I don't need gold. I don't need silver. I'm not of a carnal mind. I'm of a spiritual mind. I don't need it because again, I know what the word of God, I know what listening to God, I know what it has done for me. Do you know what the word of God and do you know what listening to God has done for you today? You see, for the psalmist, listening to God and hearing his word was highly valued because again, it gave him or them life. The psalmist, we will see, said there in the 73rd verse, that it molded them, that they were fashioned by God's mouth, by his word that the Lord was saying. And the psalmist said that because he was fashioned by the word of God, 
said that they desire even more to learn the way of God. Mm -hmm. God's word must have been doing some good for the psalmist. I would ask you today that if you are listening to the word of God, has it done good for you? Again, we are to be living testimonies of what listening to God has done for us so that, again, we can help those who may be struggling with listening to God. Again, do you desire to be molded by the Lord today? Do you desire to be shaped and fashioned by the Lord today? Again, if you do, then you will do the things necessary to be able to listen to his voice. You see, we should all value listening to God over any riches that are of this world. As we know, this world and its riches, they are fading away. Therefore, because they are fading away, the happiness that they can bring, they are fading away as well. But guess what's not fading away? God. God is eternal. God is always speaking. God's word is also eternal. God's word, I say to you today that his word is always speaking. The word of God, I tell you today that it can establish your steps. It certainly has established my steps. The word of God, listening to his voice, I say to you today, can lead and it can guide you unto all that is good. It can bless you. Do you desire to be blessed today? You see, the word of God, listening to his voice, it can and will lead you unto righteousness. Do you desire to be righteous today? You see, again, if you desire to be righteous today, then you will do what is necessary to be able to listen to his voice. Again, I hope that you desire these things today. I hope that you desire to be blessed. I hope that you desire to be holy and righteous as well. You see, again, listening to God will bring holiness and righteousness your way. What will listening to something else or somebody else, what will it do for you? I tell you today that it certainly won't make you holy. It certainly won't make you righteous. Amen. Amen. Amen.